Okay, welcome. So 2022. So I want to go over, um, before we start the cauldron blessing, a way to clean our cauldrons. And some of you might already be a pro, but I get a lot of questions on the best way to clean your cauldrons. So before we begin, let me show you my dirtiness of my cauldron. And check out how dirty my cauldron got this year. I love to see how dirty, look at my lid. Okay, yeah, it's really dirty. I love to see how dirty my cauldron gets by the end of the year. Same with my uh, protection bottles. I always look at them and see how much protection I received. So it is good to clean them. I like the older, the better, but rust eats away at them. So it is uh, not good for the cauldrons. So if you want to clean your cauldron, um, you want to season it. But the first step of seasoning it and taking care of it is to respect it. So we are a steward of this cauldron. We are the caretaker. This is our Pandora's box. <laughs> and we want to use our cauldrons often. So the more we use it, the more powerful our cauldron will become. And you don't have to clean it all the time. You can whenever you feel like you want to re-bless it. You can do this blessing anytime. It doesn't have to be once a year. I like doing it once a year. But if I had some like real crazy stuff happen or I was dealing with a lot of darkness, I would probably cleanse it and bless it. So we can't always cleanse it. So what we want to do is, let me grab a little piece of this. So here's a little corner I'm going to do. Look how dirty that is. It just looks so witchy and old. Okay, bye-bye old magic. <laughs> I get addicted to these things. So the best thing to do is to use sea salt or coarse salt. You can use pink Himalayan salt. Some people will use black salt, any type of coarse salt. And I wet my towel, I wet my little cloth. And I'm just gonna show you this. You're, you're not doing this right now, but you can. So I get it wet. Thanks, trying to get wet. I put some sea salt on my cloth, sticks to my cloth. I'm gonna scour it and just give it a good scrub. Okay, so do a little section. I'll take a before and after picture of this. You can see it. And grab a little more. And scrubbing it. Look how dirty it was. So after you scrub it like this, I'm gonna rinse it lightly. And you can grease it. So after you, you salt scrub it and you want to get all of the stubborn stuff out, then you want to dry it. So I'm rubbing it with the dry part of my cloth. And let me just hold it up so you can see it. Oh, I guess you can see my little spot right in here. Not, there's kind of the before. So it's coming along. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh at myself. Okay, scrub brush is probably better to use. Uh, take a little bit of oil. So you can use corn oil or my dad always says, or a vegetable oil. My dad uses butter. <laughs> my dad uses butter for everything and just rub it all over where you've washed it. So I'm just gonna do the spot that I washed. 
and you grease inside and out wherever you want cleaning with how nice that's starting to look. All shiny and black compared to that dirtiness. After you have it all greased, the whole thing, and when I rub it, I just pay attention to what I'm doing. You know, whatever pops into your mind is part of the cleansing. After you're finished, uh, you wanna make sure you store it in a cool place for a couple of minutes. And then I put it into the oven at 400 and bake it. And people's, people have said like bake up to an hour I just kind of look at it and know you can kind of tell it's done. I don't think I've ever had it in that long. Probably like half an hour. <laughs> 33 minutes is what I usually do. And then that's it. And you can repeat it if you don't like the way it looks. You can scrub it again, oil it again, put it back in. Um, but what I love about it is the magic behind cleaning it. So we use the salt and I wanna get into a little bit of that magic. So let's get into that. What I love about the cauldron and place your cauldron in front of you where you can see it. So you don't have to have it clean before you do this blessing. But I had a few people ask, how do I clean it once it gets old looking? So make sure you have your cauldron in front of you, both hands on the cauldron as I'm talking to you or looking at it is fine. So the cauldron is actually the symbol of spirit and earth. And the cauldron represents the earth mother. And if you take a look at the cauldron and hold it, the inside of the cauldron represents the power of creation. So the cauldron represents the sphere of influence. And it represents the most common elemental correspondence. The things that we want to turn tangible. Earth is the power. Water is used within it, which we're gonna to do tonight, air and fire. So all of, we combine all of the elements into our cauldrons when we're creating something. And you know, you gotta think about the power of creation because before the power of creation, there's a lot of influence and matrix that goes into it comes as an idea or as a happening, an experience that we wanna change or work on, but it comes from nowhere. And we believe that those things that come from nowhere are instruction to help us and to help others. So look at the cauldron as the belly of creation. And we use the cauldron um, to manifest. And I want to go into a little bit about that. So the cauldron also represents the earth because it's made out of um, iron, cast iron, steel. Some people have brass, but it's a metal. And when we touch it, we want to think about the power within ourself. And we want to think about the elementals, the creatures of the earth, the creatures of the soil, even animals that we may fear. <laughs> whatever exists in this realm, whatever is tangible, we want to think about the element of earth our security, our mother. And it said that the power of the goddess even blows through the strands of our hair as our hair grows. 
we're connecting, we're growing, and it's our connection that moves our head in a new direction whenever we need it. So focus on feeling the cauldron within your hands and focus on the center of your chest and think about all of the stresses, anxieties, all the things that we would love to get rid of, all the things that we're dealing with and experiencing, all the things we fear, everything. And as it comes into your mind, know that it's even entering not just your whole body, but your hair. And it's all strengthening us. All of these stresses and anxieties are, stress, are releasing. Pay attention to your hands. You're touching the womb. So this cauldron represents the womb of the goddess. It represents the consciousness of water. So what I want you to do is take your water and pour it into your cauldron. And you don't need very much, but you want enough that we're gonna put our cauldron, our candle in it in a minute. So just put enough that your candle will get unlit from the water, but we're not putting the cauldron in or the candle in yet. So put the water in. There we go. I had to put more. <laughs> it wasn't enough. Okay. Mm. I want you to look into your cauldron and try to see your face. I got to move up. Try to see your face in it. And if you can't see your face, breathe into it. We're going to breathe into it three times. Okay, now grab some of your salt that you have and put it in your left hand. Isn't it amazing how dark the waters in the cauldron looks? I love scrying. This is an amazing um, magic mirror. You can use it to scry. It's kind of harder though because of the way your face looks into it. You're kind of looking at a different angle. Okay. So a lot of history comes from the cauldron and I just want you to pay attention to your salt as I'm talking. And one of the most famous cauldrons is Caridwin's cauldron or Seridwin's cauldron. And she was known as a Welsh or Celtic nature goddess. And she's known as the goddess of wisdom and knowledge. She has two children, a daughter of the light and a son of the shadow. And it is said that she has a large cauldron from which she brews her powers of knowledge. And she created one potion for her son so that he could know and understand the light. And she put six secret herbs and had a blind man tend to the fire and a young boy to stir it. The potion had to be brewed for a year and a day 
which is probably where we get the idea that it takes a year and a day to become initiated. But the first three drops of the potion would bring knowledge and understanding. However, after that, and after a while, the potion turns to a poison. Unfortunately, the legend says that the young boy who was stirring was careless and ending, ended up splashing some of it onto his hand. And he is the only one who got the knowledge. But with that knowledge, he became fearful and fled. Herodwin chased him, and he learned to shapeshift. Even though they had a long run, she finally caught up to him and ate him. Nine months later, she gave birth to another boy who retained his wisdom. From that story, we learn that creativity is within us. And even though things may not go the way we want, in the end, things will work out if we use our minds and our creative energy. She is seen as the moon goddess and a harvest goddess as well. And she is associated with prosperity. And this actually translates to a song. Her name means song. She is also seen as the crone part of the triple goddess. And many people honor her by, owner, uh, by honoring, I can't talk, by honoring her dark and light side. And so they'll carry with them Labrador or Moonstone to represent her. But she is seen as a goddess who guards the knowledge of the underworld and the powers of manifestation. And we can be one with her when we connect with her, when we want to get a message or when we want to create something that we desire. But all of her magic and all of our magic lies deep within our spirit. And, you know, that's important to know about magic is people are like, well, they don't understand how important magic really is because magic doesn't manifest what you think will happen. It manifests what's truly inside of us, how we feel about that. And that's why it's important for us to raise our vibration with the power of the earth, air, fire, water, and spirit using the herbs or the crystals or the potion. It helps lift our spirits so that we can focus on the desire and that each thing that we're using in our cauldron represents that desire. It's a way of communication. And it's a way of creating spirit with the energy of the herbs that we want so that that can be read. And as we're focusing on our intention, and we're looking at all of the blends that we're putting together to create the amazing spirit of our magic. We are connecting to our higher self. And our higher self is divine. And so this cauldron represents our power in connection to the goddess. And the reason why it represents the underworld is because it's the underworld and the spirits of the earth that carry things through into manifestation. We don't manifest. We come up with the idea. We send the spirit and the soul into the universe and it becomes a manifestation. But there's spirit behind that manifestation. And for some of us, we use the herbs or we use the power of the cauldron so that it is connected to the divine feminine. So this is a goddess that is very closely associated to witchcraft and magic. And she is um, someone that we connect to automatically when we use the cauldron for change. 
Every time we use the cauldron for change, a new cycle is happening and a transformation takes place in our life. So now that you've held the salt, just make sure you can feel it. Take note on how it feels in your hand. I feel like a coziness to my salt. It's like, I don't want to mix and take it yet. I want you to grab a pinch of your salt with your blessing fingers and repeat after me. Paradwin. Paradwin. Lady Paradwin. Dark goddess, I call to thee. Now sprinkle it into a clockwise circle. And I do it three times and say, help me change to whom I'm meant to be. Dear gar dark goddess, blessed be. And it doesn't matter how much salt. If you have more, you can use it um, after or pour it right in. Actually, I'm pouring mine right in. So the salt also represents earth and salt is so magical. So pour the rest of the salt into your cauldron, into the water. And I want you to look at it again. Breathe three times. Oh, my cauldron smells so good. <laughs> I wish I could keep smelling that. Put your left hand, go into Gasho. Open your hands, go to the side, Isis pose. Put one hand down to your side and the left hand is going to go over your cauldron. And as you do that, try to see if you can see any like spiritual energy or almost like a, a invisible smoke. Look at the rim of your cauldron. Look for a psychic white type of energy and just take note on where you go down close to it. Let your hand touch the rim of your cauldron for a minute. Bring it back up. How it feels light. Bring it back down. Oh, and just feel the energy in your palm. You might feel warmth. You might feel coolness. It doesn't matter. You just want to open your connection. So right now we're connecting to the power inside of our cauldron. And it's going into our palms and up our arms and into our crown chakra and down our meridian, all the way to our roots, all the way down our feet. Focus on your feet. And then if your arm gets tired, let go. Okay. <laughs> Anytime you do magic and you feel tense, you're, you've done your connecting, okay? You don't have to do it in pain. Now we're going to grab, oh, take note on how your left hand feels. Ah, we're going to grab our right hand and grab our candle. Put it in your left hand. Oh, and we're going to charge it. Okay. Now we want to summon the power into our body, mind, and spirit through this invocation so that when we connect to our magic and the things that we want to do, we, it's active right away. No questioning. Okay. Let's see. So repeat after me while you're holding your candle in your left hand. Of darkest moon, of darkest nights, thou art wisdom, 
by firelight. In misty woodland, on mountain peaks, in deepest caverns, knowledge to see, in womb, in tomb, in afterlife, in love, in loss, in joy and strife of manifestation, of transformation, old crone, midwife, grandmother weaver, storytell and seeker, wisdom teacher, secret keeper, bearer of the boiling cauldron, we call you thee. Peridwin. And now focus on how your candle feels. And then we're going to light it up. So light your candle before you put it in a cauldron. And you want to take note on how it how it grows in power. Uh. Of course, I always look right above the wick to see that cloaked goddess in the candle. Just above the wick, mine's flickering in and out. And I have a little bit of red on my cloak. So something is in creation. So remember, the cauldron represents the goddess. It's the vessel that holds the mystery of life. It's the sacred elixir the fluids of our creation, the power of the feminine. It represents regeneration, death and rebirth. As we create something, we are ending something. And the potential of the cauldron and of your ritual work is unlimited, it's infinite. So just like this cauldron is a symbol of the great goddess you are too and it serves as you do the sacred feminine inside of the cauldron represents our womb and the things that we are stirring up and we use the cauldron to charge water or any other liquid that we may consume as part of a ritual or we'll use it to cleanse a place so many different uses for the cauldron. And you know, the cauldron is also known as a larger version of the chalice. So if you don't have a cauldron, you can always just use chalice. We use it to scry and to connect with ourselves. If you look into the cauldron, you'll be able to see your light or your darkness. When I see my darkness, my face will look very shadowy. And it doesn't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I always look for a shine or I always look at my third eye when I look in my cauldron. And know that this is the container to create and to grow. So let us put our cauldron in or our candle in. But before we put our cauldron or our candle in, tip your cauldron or tip, oh, tip your candle into the wax or into the cauldron, I can't talk, <laughs> and let it drip. It's on top of each other, you don't have to move it around and it doesn't matter, but let it drip until you have, I usually go all the way around the candle. I have a nice even burn on my candle. Go all the let your candle drip into your cauldron for an entire circle. Because I'm Libra, I don't like things <clears throat> unbalanced. Okay, 
So if you've gone all the way around and you like the way your candle looks, not too funky, leave it. Take your wax out. I always put that aside. I'm gonna look at it later. If anything else breaks off, leave it in the cauldron and we wanna place our candle in it. And this might be hard. And if you can't do it in the center, it's okay. Even if you have to lean it over the edge a little bit. All we wanna do, so I'll show you mine's not sitting in the center. Whoops. <sighs> so basically what we want to do, there, mine's standing. I wish I could lift it and I can't, but if you get it standing, it's a good thing. Might take a little practice. Brett's trying to get his to stand. And you know what, it might not stand because one side is burnt more than the other. Basically, basically we want this candle to burn. Basically, we want this candle to burn until it goes out by the water. I'm gonna take a shot so I can take a picture of it to show you. So let the water put your candle out. There. And you let it burn. So now that you have your cauldron burning in there, we are almost done. Um, and I always think about as it's burning. Thing I want. So we use the salt in the ritual because it represents earth. And when we mix it with water, it's magically known as the seed of life. Or in the ancient days, semen. Okay, unlit candle is a virgin. Salt water is a seed of life known as semen. So we can use salt water because it's very purifying. And it's actually one way we make holy water. And it represents the male and its grounding energy. Whoops, my, oh, my candle just knocked itself over. I didn't even move. Okay, I gotta get back up. <laughs> it represents the grounding energy in his form. And so salt or sal salted water also represent the tears and I don't like that. I know they, it used to represent the tears of the birthing goddess, but I always saw it more of the fluid of creation, not tears, but in the old days, it represented the tears of the birthing goddess, which were shed and became the sea. They say that's where the ocean came from. Um, but, uh, that's one reason why we use salt water. So we can use salt water in our cauldron just like that and let it cleanse a place, a room, um, and it will, it will purify. The other thing we can do is we can use a quartz crystal if we want and put it in the cauldron as well when we're trying to manifest something. Quartz holds circuitry. So in magic, it's known to be an accelerator but it holds, it's like a record keeper. It holds what we want, and the vibration of it. So I like to sometimes add quartz in there specifically for certain magic. And the cauldron, even though it is um, known as a Wiccan tool, it's not, it's an ancient tool. Druids used them, pagans used them, African, uh, 
all kinds of different cultures used them, but it was known as a magical pot, something that most cultures actually use for magic as well as feeding. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, let me see if I'm missing anything. Was there something else I wanted to say? There is. Let's see how you'll do with this. Okay. I'm going to get you to repeat after me. But it is going to sound funny. Okay. I'm going to try to do this. <sighs> so repeat after me. Alami. Carbones. Sotorium. Monia. Party. Kalami, Carbones, Stoltorium, Monia, Tarti. Amore, Peridwin, Peridwin. Eridwin. And what that meant is through this invocation, I may become her living temple of witchcraft. So you just spoke another language. Let's pull a card on what we're going to receive this year. And that is it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask if you want. So the neat thing is, is, you know, you're going to see a lot of people say that Caradwin was known as a white witch, but this is all before witchcraft and witches were called that. Um, so she is known as a magical goddess, someone that had powers. They was able to change things, balance things, honor the dark and the light, but be able to see both and to be able to create. She also was known as a shapeshifter. So when we see, if we ever see a rabbit, or if we ever see like a dog, like just a wild dog, it represents her being around you. Let's see what we're gonna get this year. Power of the Okay. I did an attraction card and it makes sense. And it says, when I truly surrender my, di uh, my desires, <laughs> when I truly surrender my desires to the universe, a mighty force of faith sets in. I mean, how awesome is that for cauldron magic? I have goosebumps all over me. So before we go, let's just close this up. And again, let's just finish this. And I want you to repeat after me as you're looking into the cauldron. I am now reborn and my cauldron carries the power of the goddess. And by the power of the triple goddess of rebirth, the goddess of the underworld, the upper world, 
through the lunar moon and the middle earth. Great mother of the moon, earth and water, wise goddess, bring us the power to shape shift our desires through the universal forms and the journey we undertake. Let us tell our story and uplift the spirits full of light. We thank you. Let us live with passion, mystery, purpose, and magic. Blessed be, so mode it be. And that is it. So I am going to leave you now. Let your candles keep going until the water goes out or until the candle goes out in the water. Take a look how amazingly black that water is. And tomorrow's full moon. That's one reason why I wanted to do this tonight. Because if you can put water in your cauldron for tomorrow and let it hit the moon, try to get the moon in your cauldron. If not, let sit it outside or in the windowsill like you would your crystals. Let the power of the moon bless us. And you'll get to see how your cauldron works for you this year. So with that, I'll let you go. Once the candle burns out, pour your water outside as an offering. And I go right across my doorway that the pe that people come to. And it will bless and protect and purify as people come in. Okay. Many blessings to you. Have a great night. And may magic be afoot all year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Blessings. Bye-bye.